Okay, I haven't made a video in a while, but I've come across this tool and thought it was really useful, so I thought I'd try and make a quick guide for it. It's called Rebuilder. It's made by Raymond Scherzer, the same guy who writes CLI Main Pro. So it's all geared about rebuilding sets for Main. Um, obviously, CLI Main Pro has got the functionality to be able to rebuild sets. But this tool, the sort of spin-off tool, if you like, is specifically for that. It's just to do that, and it makes it a lot easier because you can get sometimes perhaps a bit lost with all the options in CLME and Pro because it do, can do quite a lot of functions. Um, whereas this, um, it's straightforward. It's just for rebuilding your sets. So this is a little UI for it, but it started out with a command line interface. So when you download Rebuilder, um, you get this these four files here. Um, that's what you get. You get a README, which probably tells you more than this video will, so definitely read that. Um, you get the command line tool, Rebuilder, so you can do all of this, and probably a little bit more by command line only. But I'm going to show you the UI version here, Rebuilder UI, because it's just quick and easy. Um, and when you run it, it will write this file here, settings underscore UI. And similarly, when you run Rebuilder, it will generate a settings.xml file, so you can edit that directly for configuration with it. But this is the tool, and because it's geared for just rebuilding, um, you only need three things for it, which makes it really clear and straightforward. You need a source XML file, an input directory, and an output directory. Pretty much everything else is optional, just set as default. They're the only three things that you need. And because Rebuilder has been written recently i think the latest version is 0 0.07 and that came out in november 2023 and because it's quite new tool it's been written from the ground up it's not like using the same code that clma pro does so it's optimized and it's very very fast <coughs> so whenever you run this um, you probably notice a significant speed difference from doing a rebuild action in clma pro which is another reason why this is really really good so Looking at these three things that you have to supply, the input folder is where all of your ROM sets are that you want to base the, the rebuild from. So it's going to scan all of the files, all of your zip files in the input folder um, to find what you need to produce in the output folder. And to know what you need to push in the output folder, it will use the XML file. The XML is generated from main. So I'll do that, I'll generate an XML file from a version of main. And you can use pretty much any version of main. Um, that XML is, is the version that you want to get to. So if you download uh, main, I don't know, 0 0.231 and generate the XML file, that's what you'll get generated in the output file. So that's, that's obviously really important. Whatever XML file you use is what you're gonna generate in the output file. When the ROM sets get recreated in the output file, or not just recreated or amended, you know, modified based on the input, um, you'll see these just uh, appear in the output file, uh, output folder, and then once it's completed, you know, you should have a valid set based on that XML. But I think a lot of you watching this would know what rebuilding is. It's to sort of obtain a set of ROM sets that match this XML exactly so you know that the ROM sets you're using are compatible with main version whatever it might be so um, looking at this what we need is an XML file to get your XML file you can either download one it might be available directly or you can generate one so if you're going to generate one if I get a folder up here um, and go into main that I've downloaded here I'm not going to show you how to download main um, hopefully that will be obvious. So I've got main, and in main, there's obviously an executable file, and I'm going to use that to generate my XML. So if I bring a command prompt up here, this is the folder. So to get my XML, I'm going to type main, and then I'm going to say I want my XML folder, uh, file, list XML, and then uh, write chevron to output it, and you can call it whatever you like, it doesn't matter, but um, given that I've downloaded 0.254 for some reason, I'll just call it that 0254.xml. Um, and that's what you have to do. So if I hit that, that'll have a bit of a think. The file will probably be, I don't know, oh, that was quick. Okay, how big was that file then? So if I find that file, there we go, it's 272 meg. So that's uh, a valid XML file. Um, and all that you've got in there is just definitions of ROM sets. Um, and 
um, where if actually if I open it, you can see. Okay, that's going to have a think. 200 odd meg file it isn't going to be instant, but bear with me. Okay, so here's an example. Um, open up the file and we've got machine name, uh, source file equals um, Gallagher, description, Boscanian. Okay, so the next, yes, this is Bosco. Um, Bosco does zip, you know, would be the wrong set name. Boscanian, and it's got all the files listed. So it knows what files to expect to rebuild. And that's what the XML file contains, basically. Um, okay, so if we go to the rebuilder UI, we need to choose that XML file. So in here, if I go to uh, main, and uh, we can see the XML file, choose that, open that. And that's all it needs so it's got the path up there um, it's got my input folder it's got my output folder and um, which is all we need so if i go back to check out that if i my input folder now i've only got two roms and a normal rom uh you know collection of rom sets here you'll have thousands um and also what you can do in the rebuilder you can have recursive so if you specify a folder here it's got folders within it itself so you've got various collections it will go through the lot if you tick recursive and um, not just the folder you've chosen i've only put two rom sets here because it doesn't really make a difference for the purpose of a guide whether you've got two or two thousand it's just going to sort of show what gets um, ripped out and generated so that's my input folder but here yeah you wouldn't have two files you'd have thousands um, and the output file will be empty let's just check that output file empty so in the input, uh, I've chosen these two because you've got a parent file or parent ROM set and a clone ROM set. So um, this originally came from an unmerged set. So that's why um, Doodon Patch J has got is about the same size as Doodon Patch because if they're unmerged, they've got all the files inside the zip file um, to show that it can run on its own, so it doesn't need any parent files. If you need to know the difference between parent and clones, and things like unmerged, merged, and split, there's lots of other videos, including some of my own, that explain all that, so I won't go into the details now, but basically, DDON patch J is a clone of DDON patch, so these have got files in that can um, be used to generate the output. So, going back to Rebuilder, um, we've got some other options. So filter would say, if I put something like ddon patch in a filter, it would only find ddon patch in my source. So if you just wanted particular ROMs to be rebuilt, you could use filter. Um, again, the pattern relates to the output. So you can amend the path and file name, I think, of the output, the files that are output. I just want to leave that blank. I just leave that blank unless you really want to check out the filter and pattern and again the filter and pattern and all of these options there's a lot more detail in that readme file so i'll put a link to it in the description as well but yeah if you read the readme file you get details on how to use filter and pattern and then we've got the options so the mode that's kind of quite important for when you regenerate your collection you need to make sure that you're generating it in the right format and i'll show each of these three options so you've got split set full and standalone so split should be where the parent is complete, obviously, and the clone just has the clone-specific files. So that tends to reduce the space you need because the clone only has clone files in it. just refers to the parent for the rest. You've got full, which would only generate parent files. It won't generate clone files at all, which could be useful if you just know that you don't really want to generate clones. Um, and then you've got standalone which is where it would generate clones, parents, and in a clone, it would put all the files it needs. So like it says, it's standalone. You don't need the parent ROM set to run the clone ROM set. Um, you've got plenty of other options here. Um, I want my files to end up being zipped, so you choose this. Um, SHA1 is around the, I guess, the checksum method it uses to compare files. So if here, where we've got input, it's saying that based on that XML file, it's got to match exactly with that. So having that on slows things down a little bit, not much, and that's the default, so it's recommended. If you really wanted to speed it up, you could put none. Um, or if you wanted to be 100% sure everything's absolutely correct, you could put it on both. So it would compare both the input um, values and the output values. But for the purpose of this input, it's 
really ample. It's going to verify that the source file is the right one that it should be using, and then it'll go and write it um, to the source or destination rather. Uh, recursive, I said that before. So recursive is just on the input folder. If you've got other folders within there, it will scan down there. Obviously here in my example, I've only got two files, there's no subfolders, so there's no point me ticking recursive. But if you've got a load of collections, you want it to scan down, tick recursive. And delete, there's probably various warning options if I click that, because if you hit delete as part of the process, it would when it's finished, it would delete your input files. So you probably don't want it to do that. So be wary of that, leave that alone. Um, and log level, so here you get an output of logs. And if I drag that down a bit. So you get an output of log files and you can say info is the default, um, but you could say only show me if there's a warning or an error um, or trace is more detailed than info. So for the purpose of this, because I've only got two files, I'll choose trace, but typically I'd suggest you keep it on info. Okay, um, that's pretty much it, I think. So first, I'm going to ge generate split sets. Obviously, this is going to be extremely quick, but even if you had a full set, um, a full source set, and you had nothing in your output, which is sort of rebuilding it from scratch, if you like, that would, most of the time, um, would it take me about 20 minutes, maybe? And this is a AMD 5600X, 16 gig of RAM, SSDs. I don't think it really cares about memory and the disks. It's more about CPU, but um, it doesn't take very long to build a whole set. And most of the time, people are just trying to probably update existing sets. So it's much less time than that. Either way, it's quick. Um, but here, obviously, it's going to be ridiculous. So I'll press start, and we should get in our output folder um, a rebuilt set that complies with this XML that we've generated. So it should match 0.254 requirements. So I press start. It's going to load that XML file, which is pretty big. Uh, it means, so a bit here, it means a bit about samples. You can ignore that. It's just relating to samples. So here, we just run down, um, starting the rebuild, analyzing my input files, so two files. Um, so in this file, in this file, it's got 14 matches, and in this file, it's got 14 matches. To be honest, they're probably the same content, so I don't really need to put them both, but I've put them there just to show you there's a clone that exists. Um, analyzing, optimizing, 24 files can be rebuilt to 16 ROMs. So each one of those has got um, 12 files, which is why I'm saying 24, um, but there's only probably only 16 unique files, I think. Uh, rebuilding, okay, so here, it's taking it out of my input file and it's rebuilding into my output file. And finishing and final, um, finishing and cleaning up, and then it do, doing a similar process for the um, other ROM DDON patch. And rebuild took 0.2 seconds, done. So if we look at the output file, you can see what's gone on. Output, here we go. So I'd ignore that one and that one because um, I've not put all of my source files together to produce those. The reason they're generated is because some of the files, in, some of the ROMs in my ROM set for the on patch are the same as these are using. So it's said, right, well, I can partly create these, but for the purpose of the demo, we can ignore those. So if I delete those, we've got the two files. And you can see this one is significantly bigger than this one. So this is the parent ROM and this is the split one. So we saw in a rebuilder, I went for split set, so that means DDON patch, which is the parent. I go here. You see these are all the files required by the parent. So that would run fine. And in the split set here, I've just got two. So this is the clone rather. So the clone only needs those two files. The rest, it just reads from DDON patch. If I deleted DDON patch, DDON patch J wouldn't run because it won't have the, the files. Um, so that successfully created a parent and a clone. Now, if we delete those, go back to Rebuilder and say this time, actually, I want to do a full set and don't need to change anything else. Just press start again, as I think. And over here, again, I can delete those two because they just happen to have the same ROMs as the main one. You can see DDON patch is generated fine, but there's no DDON patch J because there's no clones generated in that process. So it just skips them. Um, then lastly, we go back here and instead of full we go standalone and press start 
So this should generate all of the, um, here we go. So here it's generated um, a file for DDOM patch, which is the parent ROM set. Then we've got the clone here, and there's another A. Maybe that's American or something. I don't know what A stands for. Um, but you can see they're, the, they're broadly the same size because uh, they need all the files in there. So if I open this clone here, DDOM patch J, you can see I've got the clone files, but then within it, it's got the parent files. So that means if I deleted DDOM patch, this would still work because it would find the parent files in itself. So this way is, I don't know what you'd call it, perhaps more portable because you don't need, and you could save space because you could delete a lot of the games that you don't want. So you could just pick and choose. But the point is they're all self-sufficient. So again, it will ignore these because these just happen to have some of the files that exist in the other ones. Um, but here, the clone um, has all the files that it needs. So if I was to delete everything else and kept the clone, that clone would still run because it's got all its files. So that's another option. Um, personally, I tend to go for split sets because um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a bit easy. Well, it saves a lot of disk space. Um, if you're limited, maybe you're using a portable device or something and you want to save space on the ROMs, but um, all the options are there. And even though I've done it on a very, very small sample of data, um, it's a very quick application that really whips through a lot of the, um, a lot of the processes. Like I said, it's, it's been written from scratch with modern um, sort of brand new code, I guess, as opposed to ripping stuff out of CLI main pro and trying to sort of backport everything. It's just a, clean new application that works really quick and really well get results and that work brilliantly i'm going to use this tool quite a lot anyway any questions um please ask in the comments but hopefully that gives you an overview of how to use rebuilder thank you